Good morning, good afternoon, good evening internet, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Economical Rides. Hi there, and welcome to my final comparison between the Meteor 350 and the Classic 350. So this video is a follow-up to a video I filmed a year ago when I just picked up the Classic 350, where I gave my initial first impressions comparisons. So now, 12 months later, with 4,000 kilometers on the Classic, 8,000 kilometers on the Meteor, the Meteor I've had for nearly two years, the Classic I've had for a year, I thought I'd revisit the two bikes and see if those original comparisons still hold true one year later. I will link to that original video in the video description so you can check that out too if you'd like. So let's start with some actual figures before we uh, get into the more subjective stuff. So on the Meteor we have 19 inch front wheel and a 17 inch rear wheel as opposed to on the classic where we find we have a 19 inch front wheel and an 18 inch rear wheel on the classic we have tube tires and spoked wheels on the meteor we have tubeless tires and cast wheels on the meteor we have a seat height of 765 millimeters on the Classic we have a slightly taller seat height of 805 millimetres. That manifests itself in me being able to flat foot the Meteor and being on the balls of my feet with the Classic 350. Fuel capacity is 15 litres on the Meteor, which is 2 litres more than the Classic, which comes in at 13 litres. But with the fuel economy these bikes can achieve, range is more than adequate on both bikes. The range on the Classic 350 will be in the range of 320 to 350 kilometers in mixed riding and on the Meteor you can more or less always achieve 400 kilometers between fill-ups. In terms of weight the Classic 350 is a little bit heavier than the Meteor 350. The Classic 350 has a curb weight of 195 kilos whereas the Meteor comes in at 191 kilos. So four kilos lighter, and I think that's mainly down to the fact that on the Meteor, things like the mud guards and the side panels are plastic, whereas on the Classic, they are metal. Just a quick mention of build quality. As you can see here, this is my uh, Meteor 350 at two years of age and it's still looking brand new. And this is my classic 350 which is now one year old and again everything is looking brand new. All of the finishes seem to be durable on these bikes. Obviously if you're riding in all weathers which I don't do keep them clean, get the muck off as soon as you can. But if you take care of them, they seem to stay in really good condition for a very long time. So, in my original comparison, I did say that I felt that the Classic 350 had more bite in the brakes, but as the pads have worn in, that's actually become less and less significant, I would say right now the braking feel on both bikes is more or less the same. Now these Royal Enfield brakes are quite renowned for having a lack of bite initially and uh, subsequently it seems as though the master cylinders are to blame. A few people have changed the master cylinders and they've had much improved initial bite on the brakes. So these aren't brakes that you can operate easily with two fingers. You really need your whole hand on them but if you pull them fully and hard then uh, they get the bike stopped 
more than adequately. They're absolutely fine. But yeah, Royal Enfields in general always seem to have brakes with uh, very little initial bite. And there's Ruby, she's just uh, appeared with her Fox. She always likes to help when I'm making videos. So both bikes have identical gear ratios and sprockets, but the classic 350 does have a one inch larger rear wheel. So it is effectively slightly higher geared than the Meteor. And this was particularly noticeable, and I did mention it in that first video, uh, when pulling away uphill, that uh, the Classic 350 struggled a little bit. I had to play with the clutch a little bit more to pull away cleanly, which wasn't uh, required with the Meteor. But since the Classic is now fully run in, I really don't notice much difference, to be honest. Um, that issue is no longer an issue. So initially, maybe you'll find that the Classic does feel a little bit sluggish, a little bit overgeared, but um, be patient. Once the engine's fully run in, it's absolutely fine. Previously, this bike wouldn't go up certain hills in top gear, whereas the Meteor would. Now, this bike will also go up those same hills in top gear. So yeah, it's definitely improved to the point now where the difference in the gearing that you actually could feel is negligible now. So don't worry about that. Uh, just give the Classic a bit of time to run in and it copes with the slightly higher gearing perfectly adequately. Now in that initial video, I did say that the Classic has a sportier riding position and it encourages me to ride in a sportier way than the Meteor and that still holds true. On the Classic, you have uh, more weight over the front wheel so you feel more confident um, carrying more speed in the corners, braking into the corners, um, obviously with the rake of a cruiser style bike and uh, the smaller rear wheel taking even more weight off the front. You don't have the same degree of feel on the Meteor. So when I get on the Meteor, I don't feel the urge to ride it fast. Whereas on the Classic, I can be uh, a bit naughty sometimes. So yeah, the Classic is definitely for enthusiastic riding, a little bit more fun. And that's really where these bikes differentiate themselves. So I would say that the Classic is more of a roadster, normal style motorcycle. So yeah, if you want to ride enthusiastically, it'll do it, no problem. And the Meteor is definitely, its whole ethos, its whole soul is, hello, I'm a cruiser, relax, don't try and go fast, just enjoy the ride. So the engine and gearbox on these bikes, obviously they're identical. They do have different, completely different exhaust systems on them. Um, that's basically how they end up with their own distinct sounds. Now, I love the sound of the Classic 350. The Meteor 350 sounds good. It sounds nice and bassy. It sounds larger than a 350, definitely. But the Classic has a really nice, raw Classic single sound. Now. I'll put in a little clip of my sound comparison video and I'll also link to that sound comparison video if you're interested in the sound of these two bikes, check that video out. But yeah, sound wise, I prefer the sound of the Classic 350, but they both sound pretty decent. So now that the brakes are bedded in on both bikes, the braking performance seems the same. I wouldn't say there was any difference. You wouldn't expect that to be because the braking systems are identical. Um, the engine or the general performance on the road is now pretty similar since the Classic is fully run in. As I said, initially it did feel sluggish compared to the Meteor, but it's definitely caught up now that it's run in. Overall, the Meteor still feels a little bit livelier in every situation, just a little bit more eager to accelerate in any gear. And I really think that's just this slight um, lower gearing that the Meteor has due to the smaller rear wheel. So it's, it's very close, it's not a huge difference, but the Meteor does feel slightly nippier than the Classic 350. So on the Classic, we have a standard gear shifter and on the Meteor, of course, we have the heel and toe shifter. 
Now, I really appreciate the heel and toe shifter. I really enjoy it. So for me, that's a plus. You can get a heel and toe shifter for the classic, which I think is a worthwhile upgrade. But uh, I wasn't keen on buying things from India because of customs issues that I always tend to have. So I never got around to getting one for the classic. But uh, yeah, I would say, if you think you can get on with a heel toe shifter, considering that the shift lever on the classic isn't ergonomically the best, uh, a heel toe shifter on the classic makes a lot of sense as well. So in terms of uh, general comfort on the Meteor, I have the touring seat, which is actually quite firm initially. It's firmer than the standard seat, but that's because it's designed to give more support for a longer period of time. So it's not a soft seat, but it does work over a longer ride. It is more comfortable than the standard seat. You get less pressure points. Uh, the pillion pad I've left standard. So on the Classic 350, I've removed the rear seat, so I've, I've got it in single seat configuration. This is the standard seat. Now this is a really good standard seat. I've ridden this bike for three hours on the standard seat uh, without a stop, and it's been absolutely fine. This is, yeah, it, as I said in that first video, again, this is kind of in between the Meteor standard seat and the Touring seat. It's a little bit softer than the Touring seat on the Meteor but it does give more support than the standard seat of the Meteor. So this is a really good compromise, this seat, and I see no need to change it. So both bikes have been absolutely fine for two or three hour stints in the saddle. Both really comfortable bikes. Um, one aspect of the comfort is the ride quality, and that's another area where the Classic 350 wins. With its uh, tube tires and spoked wheels, it does ride significantly softer than the somewhat stiff and uh, unforgiving Meteor. So if you're going to be riding a lot on really bad road surfaces, the Classic is probably the bike for you. But on nice roads, they're both adequately sprung, perfectly comfortable under normal riding conditions, no issues at all. So in terms of spec, I think the uh, spec on the Meteor is slightly better, particularly considering it was a thousand euros cheaper than the Classic. So when I bought my Meteor they were fitting the Tripopod uh, as standard, which they no longer do unfortunately, but um, with a, an app update about a year after I bought the bike the Tripper actually became effective, it works really well. So yeah, on my Meteor I have the Tripopod and what you also get on the Meteor, which you don't get on the Classic, is a gear indicator here. So here's the confirmation that the Classic has no gear indicator in the LCD part of the display, which I think is a bit of an, an, an omission because um, fourth and fifth gear ratios are pretty close. So quite often I'm not completely sure whether I'm already in fifth or if I'm still in fourth. So I do occasionally change up and only to discover that I'm already in top gear. So a gear indicator in this uh, lower part would have been nice, but uh, it's very small, so they would have struggled to fit one in, I think. You can also retrofit the, the tripper pod here behind this badge, but uh, that's not something I'll be doing. So yes, in terms of spec, I actually think the Meteor was fantastic value for money when I bought it, um, because it arrived with the tripper, with the gear indicator, it was a really good spec for the price, so this was 4,095 euros back then, and this one was just over 5,000, so 1,000 euros more, no tripper pod, no gear indicator, but obviously more metal, more bright finishes on the engine. So yes, you can see where the money was spent. So, issues. Is any one bike better or worse, reliability-wise? Well, basically, reliability-wise, they've both been really good. We've had a couple of minor issues. The issue on the Meteor was that I had some the factory mirrors self-destructed. They shook themselves to bits and the heads fell off. Now, I did do a video about this, but nobody else has had this issue. And when I looked at those mirrors, I did see that they were unbranded, 
whereas normally on a Meteor's mirrors, um, Royal Enfield is stamped into the back. So considering that this bike was being made at the height of the global su supply crisis, I've got a sneaky feeling that maybe Royal Enfield fitted some subpar mirrors just to get the bikes finished and shipped out because um, yeah these mirrors that were on there they were unbranded and nobody else has had the issue but anyway the dealer replaced the mirrors for me free of charge and subsequently I got these uh, Royal Enfield bar end mirrors which I love they give a really great view behind you on both sides and they look quite smart too very well made so I love these mirrors but yeah that was the only issue I ever had on this bike was that the mirrors shook themselves to bits so, and on the classic 350, the only issue I've had is the sticky speedo issue, which many people have. And that, uh, in my case, has occurred twice when the bike has been left in the sunshine, in the direct sunshine for any length of time. The sticky speedo issue, in that case, what happens is this calibration sweep goes beyond 160 and then it returns to 40 or 30 and it doesn't return to zero. So then you have to subtract the 30 or 40 kilometers per hour from the speed that it's showing to know how fast you're going. So the first time the speedo uh, got stuck, um, I was able to rectify it by switching the ignition off and on multiple times. And the second time it got stuck, it was terminal. It wouldn't return to zero. So I was on the verge of getting a replacement speedo under warranty, but we did manage to fix that by cleaning the speedo connector, which is up inside the headlight. So you just disconnect the speedo, clean the connector on both sides, put it back together, and that rectified it. And that fix has held for seven months now. So I've managed to avoid having to, hello Ruby. I've managed to avoid having to uh, get a substitute speedo. So that's uh, something to bear in mind if you do get a classic and you do get the sticky speedo problem you can possibly fix it yourself i'll link to that video again in the video description it's not something to be terribly worried about i'm not sure royal enfield have got on top of the problem yet but um yeah you do have options to resolve the issue royal enfield have replaced a lot of speedos they don't seem to make a big fuss about it they will do that but uh, maybe you can save them having to do that. If you just clean the speedo connector, you might find that that actually solves the problem and it's the easiest fix if it works for you. So that was it in terms of issues. We've had self-destructing mirrors on the Meteor, which I think was just bad luck on my part. I don't think anyone else is ever gonna have that problem. And the sticky speedo thing on the Classic, which I was able to sort out myself, and it's quite widespread. It's something to be aware of, but uh, yeah, that was it. So. Neither bike has had to go back to the dealer for anything other than servicing. I've not had any uh, ECU warning lights or anything annoying like that that's, that's caused me to rush back to the dealer to find out what the problem is. Both bikes have been perfectly reliable apart from those aforementioned issues. In general, both bikes are reliable. Both bikes are value for money. Both bikes are great fun to ride. So there you go. I think my initial impressions were probably about right. Not a lot has changed, <laughs> except Ruby has just walked through the shop with her fox. She is such a diva, she just cannot help herself. So yeah, um, yeah, my first impressions were pretty accurate really. Um, the Classic has improved in terms of performance. The front brake pads as they bedded in um, resulted in a similar brake feel to the Meteor. Yeah, other than that I think that's pretty much everything that I said in the first video probably still applies. Obviously I've had more time with the bikes now so I quite often get asked which bike would I buy if I could only buy one and since the Classic has improved in performance so i.e. since it will go up the same mountain in fifth gear as the Meteor would um, whereas previously in the early days I was always down to fourth on the Classic but since it's um, picked up its full quota of performance the gap has really closed up it's really very close for me um, which bike I mean I think the classic is more comfortable in terms of the ride quality and the seating arrangement for me for my body for my ailments 
I think I'm more comfortable on the Classic. I definitely uh, prefer the sound of the Classic. I think it sounds really great. But then we come back to Buddy, my Meteor. So yeah, the suspension is firmer. The seating ergonomics, they do give me hip and buttock cramps from time to time I get pain and cramps. I can get them, not always, but I can. I think that's because the distance from the seat to the foot pegs is not particularly long or it's the angle, I'm not quite sure. But um, yeah, so I'm slightly less comfortable at times, not always, but at times on the Meteor. But I still would prefer it over the Classic if I had to choose. And, and so this is the weird one. So having said that I'm more comfortable on the Classic and I, and I prefer how it sounds, I still keep coming back to Buddy and the reason for that is simply it's, it's very subjective but um, it's just the way Buddy makes me feel. When you get on this bike, for me at least, it's like a switch gets flicked in my head. And on that shift from first to second gear, as I've set off, I'm already starting to relax. I'm already enjoying the bike. And when I ride the Classic, it's like pretty much every other bike I've ever ridden. I'm just riding a bike. It's good, I'm off, I'm going out on the bike, but it's not the same. There's something about the Meteor and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but just as you set off, it flicks the switch in your brain and you're just really relaxed and you're really ready to enjoy the bike. And it's just an amazing thing and it's something I've never had with any other bike. So what I would say is if you're undecided between the two bikes, but you're leaning towards the Classic, and you haven't tried a Meteor yet, do yourself a favour and try a Meteor because this bike has something about it. It's really strange, but I grew attached to the Meteor so quickly and so deeply, whereas I can appreciate the Classic and I can enjoy the Classic, but the affection that I have for the Meteor from the first moment it was just incredible. It was just different. So. Do give the Meteor a chance, unless you absolutely hate cruiser style bikes, which some people do, fair enough. But um, I think it might surprise you. It's a really special bike. So there we go. That was my comparison after one year with the Classic, nearly two years with the Meteor. Both really great bikes. Which one should you buy? I think that will just come down to personal taste, really. Maybe you don't like cruisers. Maybe you don't like classic style bikes, but uh, mechanically, obviously the bikes are very similar. They differentiate themselves in riding position and sound, and obviously style, visual style. So which bike to go for? I think that's down to personal preference. Both bikes have been reliable, apart from the issues I mentioned. So there's no concerns really. I wouldn't hesitate in recommending either bike to you. So just go for the one that appeals to you most. And if you can, make sure you try both. Because as I said, the Meteor might actually surprise you. You may not be considering the Meteor, but perhaps you should. So there you go. I think that will wrap this video up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Ruby's little cameos. She can't help herself. She's always out when daddy's filming. Ruby, there you are with your fox. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful. I'll link to all of the videos mentioned in the video description so you can check those out later on if you like. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye bye. So Ruby, thank you for helping me with my comparison video. Would you like a sausage? I think you deserve a sausage because you were very helpful. It's not like you walk through the shot all the time, is it? No, you were so good. Right, so these sausages are from Scott and Wolfie, because they sent you so many. Here's your sausage, thanks for helping. Hmm, <laughs> sausages. Mmm, -hmm. good one. Say so thank you, Scott and Wolfie. Thank you, Scott and Wolfie, nice one. <laughs>